Hi, everybody. It's a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. First question that came up today is how to get more uh, conscious of, of your, the way you're moving whenever you're in a, like a double weighted stance, particularly in a double weighted stance, but it applies to other things as well. In other words, how do you uh, take that step? And the, the key to it, I believe, is to consciously uh, commit to the supporting leg and the supporting quad, and which then a lot frees up the other leg because usually why whenever we get frozen in position uh it's because we're we're locked up the quad gets locked up because it's afraid to fall over and doesn't quite know what to do so both both sides uh, tend to get bunched up so if we can learn to commit to one leg or the other and learn to be sung qua in one leg or the other and learn to trust that then it makes it easier to make that make that step so uh, i hope i express that somewhat intelligently um anyway so why don't we stand up and let's uh, let's play with this. this is an exercise that we've done recently that uh I think uh, is helpful in this particular situation. And it's something that I like to do regularly myself. And so it's bears repeating regardless. So take a, uh, like a hip width stance, a comfortable stance. And the idea is that we're, we're learning to overcome the habitual stress response that gets locked into the hip joints and locked into the area around the hip joints, the qua, which causes us to freeze up. And when that does, when we're doing that, we, if we lock up one side, the other side tends to lock up as well. And so we, we're, we get frozen, we're unable to really move without like uh, kind of leaning over because we're the hips are not are not giving. We want to be able to become sung qua, that is we release into the supporting structure so that we can then let go and relax the muscular tension in the hip area, which then allows us freedom of movement. So to begin this, Let's start with the uh, the three pillars just to get that get that uh, established. I like to do that regardless. So feel the balls of the feet. Feel the feet kind of the weight spread out throughout the foot, but you know centered around the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of the head, tuck in your chin, and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Reach with your elbows, reach with your fingers. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Point your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. Now push, now push away from the earth and spiral down to the left and then to the right and just releasing down. So that's the, that's the action. That last part there is the, is the focal point of this exercise. And it's a real key to uh, getting Sun Kwa, to becoming very conscious of that. Now, as I said, this is an exercise I, I will find myself doing many times during the day, just because it, it enables me to to regain control of my quad and my legs and to kind of shift out of any stress response that might get, get bunched up in there. And that's a, it's, it's, it's a real common thing amongst us humans to get locked up in the, in the hip joints. It's something that got installed when we first started to walk and we never really turned it off. 
And I don't think you necessarily will want to turn off the, the, the stress response. You just want to be able to control it. So the, uh, the game here is to feel the, bo the ball of your left foot, set the left knee, and you're going to push away from the earth. And what this does is it allows us to, to do something which we're doing most of the time anyway, which is push away from the earth. And then ah, release down. You're kind of sitting down into that left leg. So you're allowing about maybe 70% of your weight in your left leg now. Maybe, maybe 70, 80%. You just want to really feel the support of that. So what we're doing now is, is feeling the support that comes with that yin relaxation, that yin dropping. And what happens then is that it allows the energy to flow much more freely. And uh, it unkinks the hose. Now you're going to push away with the left leg and you're coming up to center. And now you feel yourself pushing away with both legs. That is your, your feeling center. You want to locate yourself dead center, but also while feeling the balls of your feet. You're kind of reaching down through the balls of your feet and down through the bubbling well, actually. And feel that connection there. So you have an energetic connection, even though you're not Sun Hua. It's not, not the most efficient place to be, but it, it, it's, it's a, a, its own distinct yang energy. Both legs are yang, that is they're both pushing away from the earth. You're rising up. And now feel the ball of the right foot and release down and sink down into your right leg. You're lowering down into that and just, ah, just nice and soft. It, don't drop in, right? You want to ah, ease down. It's like an elevator coming down to your, your, the floor you're landing at. It's not an abrupt stop. It's ah, you're just releasing down. And notice as you do that, as you take over that, then you can relax your left leg as you do that. So you, by trusting your right leg more, you start to be able to say, okay, I can, I can release my left leg now and my left quad. So the muscle, the, you want your, your butt to be really, really soft and squishy. If you want it to, uh, to have um, any tension there at all. So now push away with your right leg and then uh, sink down into both legs. So now both legs are yin. You're releasing down and feel the energy of that. Feel the energetic connection with the earth as you do that. And see if you can relax your butt, relax your legs and relax your hip joints. They're just kind of settle down and you're alighting into, into your posture. Now feel the ball, the left foot, push away with that coming up. You're creating, you're activating that muscular contraction that pushes away and then uh, release down. So you're lowering into that. As you release down, you want to get your, your right leg to really ni be nice and loosey-goosey. So you're really trusting that. And the more you can let go of the tension in your right leg, so we move to maybe more like 80, 90% in the left leg now as we learn to trust this a little bit more. So all this is by releasing this tension, this is giving us the opportunity to be able to, to shift out of that fixed position because we've disconnected that pre-conscious stress response that's locking up our hips. So now push away and come back to center. And you're, you're reaching with both legs, you're, you're extending upward, both are young and with that energetic connection with the earth, it's still a powerful posture. It's different than whenever you're Sung Kwa on both legs. You can actually learn to release your hips so that you're Sung Kwa even though your legs are pushing away. But that uh, takes a little bit of practice. 
And now uh, you're going to push away with your right foot and then sink down into your right leg. And really relax into that. And empty out your left leg so that you want that to be nice and loosey goosey. So you want to have that, that sense of really trusting the right leg. So what we, what we can do that, then we can turn without, without pushing away to turn. So we turn and then pick up your left heel and just step forward with that. And then step back and then step forward. And so what we're doing is we're learning to trust this. And by releasing that, that left hip joint, we can, we can actually make are somewhat fluid motions with that with that left leg. So back and back to center and push away and sink. And you're releasing down. Your both legs are very soft and relaxed now. And just turn in that. And so whenever you are in this, even though you're double weighted here, if your hip joints have you unplugged from that, that stress response, then all you got to do is, oh, I've got to release down, spiral down, and then pick up the heel and step forward. And you're able to quickly go one leg or the other. There's a commitment to one leg or the other, but you're starting from a relaxed posture. You're starting from a place where both qua are sung, and you can then be able to make your adjustment instantly without a lot of, uh, uh, of throwing your upper body around trying to, trying to compensate for that. So uh, uh, does that sound good, Nick? Does that work for you? Good, okay, cool. So uh, uh, let's uh, sit down please and we're gonna uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, any questions or comments, thoughts about that? Any, uh, Scott? Um, one other thing that, I, that I've that i discovered um, with this with this is that I was releasing too much. I wasn't keeping my, you know, I wasn't lifting up on my knee one and it was slumping everything. So I, so it would actually, I wouldn't be able to actually make the, the leg shift because I was slumped and it wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't coherent, I guess. Okay, interesting. Also, uh, the Niwan is our connection to the Yang Chi of the heavens. And so the, the, uh, that Yang is what makes it light. It makes it, uh, uh, it create, it's, it's an, uh, uh, there's a, there's a uh, a lightness about it, which then enables us to to be a little more nimble. So that yep. having that, so that so the heaviness comes with the sinking down into the earth, and the uh, we have that other thing. So we have this these two poles in opposition, which then gives us some some flexibility in our movements. That's that's exactly what I meant. Beautiful. Let me adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. Uh, so, um, anybody else? All good? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mentioned poles in opposition is something that comes up a lot, and that's really uh, uh, it's a, it's a really important part of what we're doing. That is, we create energy by poles in opposition. I know some people have a... Uh, uh, a resistance to the idea of creating because that you know the we, the first law of thermodynamics is energy can neither be created nor destroyed and that seems to be problematic but if we there's a lot of definitions to create 
that um, uh, we can find one to fit there. If we talk about like creating work of art or whatever, you know, once we move outside of a closed system, things get created all the time. It's only whenever we're talking about within a closed system, that is, if we're looking at things within a specific set of, of factors, then we say, yes, within this, within this system, to make sense of this system, we have to say it's, it's you can't create in there. But uh, when we're talking about creating energy, we're talking about the interaction of consciousness with the world. And that brings in a whole, whole different set of factors that are not available to the physicist. It's something that is that's we're we're opening up the system. We're saying, hey, what else is possible? And we're pulling stuff out of the air. And so there is, uh, in in that sense, there is creation happening all the time. And particularly in the case of creating energy, it's more useful, I think, to to uh, think about it as creating it rather than than just rearranging it, changing its form from one shape to another. It's because it is, it's there because you decide to put it there. It's there because you are making a choice to hold poles in opposition. So the, uh, this is uh, particularly important with the exercise we're gonna do tonight, cause we're gonna be playing around with the, um, Uh, the organs and the organ functions. So again, the uh, in the Chinese model, we're not looking at organs as things such as you know the heart being this hunk of of bunch of cells that are that are organized in such a way that do do this thing. It's it we're looking at the heart function in terms of Chinese medicine. So a heart energy, and it has certain qualities. And it integrate, inter, integrates with the, the rest of the system in, in a certain way. And today we're going to be uh, we're going to be addressing the heart protector meridian, which is the pericardium. And it uh, the pericardium, the heart, and the lungs are three energies which are yin energies, and they're in the in the upper jowl, and they are going down. Okay, so they're they're yin and uh, they're uh, 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 I'm sorry, they're, uh, they're yin energies and um, they're uh, yin organs. I'm sorry, they're yin organs. The, uh, the, um, and they're, they're going down. The uh, kidney is in the, uh, the lower jaw and it's, it's coming up. The energy is coming up. And so we have these two, um, these, uh, these two functions. So actually the, um, I'm going to retrace that. The the, they are yin in that they're organs, but they are yang in, in the sense that they are going down. So the yang energy is going down, the yin energy is coming up. So sorry for the, uh, the misstating at that. But the, uh, what we're going to do is a, a really cool qigong exercise where we're going to be using that idea of poles and oppositions to help to create an alchemy inside the body, which allows the the yin chi and the yang chi to create like a, a, a turbine effect. And the key thing to remember about qigong is that it's not quiet. It's, it's we are creating a disturbance whenever we, uh, whenever we do a qigong. That is we are disturbing the state of equilibrium so as to create energy, to be able to create movement. And if we, um, you know, if we think about a, a, any system as it moves toward equilibrium, it moves toward death. Any system that moves toward, is a far from equilibrium system is one that exchanges energy with its environment and, and it is creating new forms and, and new energies. So we're, uh, we're moving in that direction with this. That's different, and an important distinction is made is it's different from you yourself. You as the Shen in this experiment, you get 
to be in that calm centered place, in that, that pivot point. But the energies circulating around you are, are active, they're, they're turbulent. And the, to the extent that we can direct this turbulence, we can create chi flow. And so we're working with the pericardium, which is the heart protector. It, it takes the energy from the heart that is the excess and kind of dispels it and keeps it from getting overloaded with, uh, with crap. And uh, so we're going to, uh, uh, going to explore that by holding poles in opposition and moving in different directions and it also will include some of the uh, some of the stuff we just did with the uh, with the qual stuff. So why don't you stand up and let's uh, let's play around with this. The thing about the heart, lung, and pericardial meridians is they are in the hand, sh wrist, elbow, shoulder, uh, going connecting to the, into the upper chest. So this is, I might say it's the upper jaw. It's the, it's, it's the upper part there. And so that's in opposition to the lower jaw, the kidney and part of the liver is down here. And then the middle jaw, which is the, the spleen and uh, stomach. And so we want to get that sense of uh, that we are taking different systems. We're pulling the yin apart from the yang, even though at equilibrium, it's all one big mush. Yin is yang and yang is yin, but first separate the two. That is, we need to pull it apart if we want movement, if we want life. And so we have to separate the yin and the yang. So, so feel your three pillars. Reach with your elbows, open the shoulder joints, reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers. And just notice by doing that, you are creating an energy flow. You're activating those three meridians and you're creating an energy flow just by doing that. And feel the balls of your feet, feel yourself sinking. So your body, which is the yin part here, it's sinking down. While the yang part, the heart, lung, and pericardium are up. And very slowly, Carry with your hands. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers. Reach with your elbows, open that up. Feel yourself sinking. Your body is sinking while your arms are, are carrying. Now, 
press down with your hands, your arms reach down and come up with your body. Feel that opposition, body coming up, hands coming down. Feel yourself reaching down and with your hands while your body is reaching up. Sink, hands come up, body sinks. Feel your body sinking, your hands reaching up. Now continue, bring your hands up, sink, and bend your knees and drop a little lower as you sink. Feel those poles in opposition. Slowly press down as you come up. Reach down and body also goes down, sinking, everything sinking. Feel the density, feel the heaviness. Feel the earth chi making everything very, very heavy. Come up, very slowly reaching up and extending upward. Body is coming up, hands coming up. Both feel, feel the yang, feel the lightness of the yang position. It's expansive. Continue to reach up with your hands and sink into the into your legs, sink your body. Now reach out with your hands, reach forward and pull back with your body, moving away from the hands. Feel that opening. Feel that extension. Sink a little lower into your legs as you reach out, open. And 
would come up slowly and pull back with your hands. Reach forward with your body. Reach your elbows behind you. Open the shoulders, open the chest. Bring your head back. Open. Reach forward. Come down as you push away, coming up with the body. Stop at your heart level. Reaching out without moving your arms. Reaching with your elbows. Come down, body comes up and bring your hands down to the, the navel level. Let's go down, body comes up, reaching down, opening. Arch your back, open the chest, open the shoulders. Feel that expansion. Back up. Carry. And sink. Body sinks, arms come up very slowly. Very deliberately. Feel your wrists, feel your elbows, feel your fingers, feel your shoulders. Open your arms. Sink your body. Feel that expansion. Bring your hands in. Carrying upward, sinking down.
press down and come up with the body. Sink, hands come up. Very soft, very relaxed. Round your arms, reach out with your elbows, your wrists, your fingers. Feel your arms opening and closing at the same time. They're expanding outward, same time they're compressing inward. Palms down. Sink. Everything sinks. And just feel into your body, feel the energy flow. Step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi, throw it away. Allow yourself to dissolve. into the formlessness. Just feel that emptiness right now. It's a neutral place beyond the energy. Please have a seat. Make some noise or something. Hmm. How was that? <laughs> Good. Excellent.
Going through that, I could actually feel myself holding myself up like I was at the rim of a swimming pool uh, with everything below me just being released. And the same thing with sinking. I felt like I was going under as well as coming out over. Uh, that was a really cool uh, show of energy. Nice. It was, it was, it was awesome. Great. Scott. That was flipping cool. <laughs> That was really, really good. <clears throat> so many different flavors. Many different flavors, yes. Yeah. And making all the local stops, so get a chance to to sample what's going on there, and just seeing. Oh, how how can we how can we create these different forms, these different energy forms? You know, just by shifting our awareness, shifting our you know, the way we, we hold our bodies, the way we move. So you can see how we, you know, we talk about mobilizing the chi, you know, before you do something, how it doesn't have to be a big deal. That was, that was a pretty big deal there doing, you know, doing that, creating uh, that much energy. But we don't need to do, do all that. We can... We have recreatable potentials of energy by being by familiarizing ourselves with that process. We say, oh, okay, I know what that feels like. And so we can summon that energy without a lot of the ramping up. It takes some takes some practice, it takes familiarity, it takes, you know, a willingness to to let it in. And to, but when you do that, then it becomes a resource. So we don't have to carry it around with us all. That's why the whole idea of letting go of the energy, disappearing the chi is really important because when we can do that, we, we get comfortable with the idea of letting go. Comfortable with the idea, like, yeah, I don't need to store the chi because I can create it anytime I want. And then you, uh, we start to move in the direction we want to go with with the kung fu. We get say, oh yeah, we can we can do we can do cool stuff, and we don't. It doesn't take a a lot of ramp up in order to be able to do it. So yeah, Valerie, can you um, explain again to me? Um, how, I mean, I got lots of juice. There was no denying that, right. but my brain is going, okay, how is that relating to the lungs, the part pericardium and the heart, and then the, you know, liver and spleen in the, the lower body. I'm not, I, I'm not quite putting that together. I mean, it worked, but, <laughs> but and, I, I brain I didn't get it. <laughs> I, I I get you. It's a uh, um, it's a way of talking about this stuff. You know, it's a it's a, a a model that is based on relationships. It's saying this thing relates to that thing in such a way as to create this effect. That's the the whole Chinese model is based on relationships. The Western model is based on stuff. It's like identifying stuff and counting stuff and measuring stuff. And the Chinese model is more about, that's about quantity. And this is about more about quality. It's about it's like, yeah, well, this is, this is blue and that's kind of green and that's up and this is down and things like that. So it's a way of talking about relationships. And you don't need to understand the whole uh, model because I certainly don't. Um, it's uh, it goes very deep. They've had a few thousand years to uh, to to hammer out the bugs on it. So it's a uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a whole lot of information there, and 
every time I turn around, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and I, I know enough to make it work. So you know, the, uh, the idea here is that if we have these young meridians, the you know, pericardium, heart, and lung, and the energy is going down, so we want to, mm, that's, that's, that's the flow of that energy. The yin stuff is coming up. And so that we have these two, which create this turbine effect whenever they, they get, they start to interact. So uh, uh, one of the cool things that uh, uh, Master Yang Fukui, you know, when he was, he was talking about it, he said that yin energy eats yang. It is rising so to eat it, it, it's looking for its complement so that it can fill up. The yang energy eats the yin. It's, it's, it's looking for its complement so that it can, it can uh, fill up. And so, but they are constantly shifting so that nobody ever stays full. It's not like you had big turkey dinner and you're kind of sitting back and watching the football game. It's like, no, no, we go on to the next thing. We build more energy on top of that. So that's where it creates that turbine effect. These two are, you know, one time he, he said, the chief fights. That's, that's what it's doing. It fights, you know, it's, it, you know, which was a revelation to me when he said it, it was many years ago, but it was like, oh, because I'd kind of gone into the idea of, oh, we do our Tai Chi, so we get nice and relaxed and mellow and, and everything is, is la-di-da. It's like, no, that's not what it's, not what it's there for. It's, for. it's for this, the chi fights. And it, you know, and you want to, um, that desire of the yin for the yang, that desire of the yang for the yin is what makes, makes it go. It's what makes the uh, the engine, what drives the engine. Otherwise, the engine just kind of sits there and it's very happily rusting away in the in the backyard because it's uh, it's got there's nothing there. It's got nothing. He said, uh, he said, yes. Well, you have you have water without fire. You have a dead body. It's like, it's like, it's like you need you need these two complementary things which are or fighting in order to have a live body. And I thought that was, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I get it. That, that, that's pretty cool. So, uh, so we're, uh, so we, the, we have these things, these meridians, which are right here. So your, your heart meridian goes up here, boom, boom, boom. And it goes to the armpit. Your lung meridian goes on, goes down here. And then it goes to right here on your upper chest, your, uh, your, Pericardium is on the middle finger, goes down here like this, and goes to the uh, to the chest, right, to, right beside the, the 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 nipple there. That's uh, so. The, so these things are very much shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers. This these are all we're connecting this upper body stuff with those three meridians. Having that grounded in mm, that. That body stuff, the the you know the the yin of the the kidney energy, the yin of of the um, uh, he said that actually the liver kind of splits between the the middle jaw and the, and the lower jaw, but it's uh, it has a, a, a yin function as well. And then the two ones in the middle jaw, the the stomach and the spleen, they are uh, they are. Um, uh, they tend to uh, uh, be kind of neutral, and uh, but so uh, what we're doing there it's it's a colorful way of talking about how we can get poles in opposition by visualizing it as as body by embodying this energy. A key part of this is embodiment. That is, we're we're not becoming one with the energy and floating away, we are saying, no, no, what can I do with this? I bring it into my body. I feel it in my body and my allows my body to, to become 
healthier and, and more active and more, uh, more involved with life. And the key there is that, you know, if we have the yang chi of the heavens, which is, which is formlessness and the yin chi of the earth, which is form, and man is in the middle. That's where we get to uh, we get to to play with these things. The food we eat is of the earth, and the and the air we breathe is of the sky. And so these two things are, you know, are they're constantly churning up, and we get uh, we get metabolism. So these are colorful ways of talking about these processes and telling a story which is pretty coherent coherent enough that it's still being told after a few thousand years so it's uh they're still working on it but it's uh it's still it applies in many many situations and it applies when in things which are primarily relational rather than numerical i think uh i may have said way too much there but you get the <laughs> you get the idea <laughs> Scott. What's that? Well, for me first. You, you had me at the yin eats the yang and the yang eats the yin. That made, I got it. Right. And if you don't separate them, then nobody eats. You know, <laughs> if, if they're all just eaten, you know, so it's just, you need to separate those two poles in opposition. The yang must be separate from the yin in order to create a flow. Scott. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually very glad Ali asked that question because I didn't know I wanted to know all that stuff, but that was <laughs> very, that was actually very helpful. Okay. Um, um, one thing that I found interesting was even though I do the Reclaiming Lost Territory every day, I still found new territory doing this. And so it's going to give me, you know, I realized that the, the slow, the slow, deliberate movements opened up different play different territory that I didn't know was available. Beautiful, so beautiful. That's good. Right, cool. It's a really important to remember that this, this idea is, uh, can be put into anything, but particularly your, you know, your Tai Chi Tran form or something like that. And that if you're doing your Tai Chi Tran form without a pant load of chi, you're missing out on on the on on the fun. You're missing out on most of what we're doing here, and most people are doing it without a lot of chi. You know, they're or they're just doing it so they can kind of get you know get a, a flavor of the chi. But to be able to control your chi, to direct it, to be able to to create more and to create more flow is kind of cool, and also. At the same time, to recognize that you're not creating anything, that it's all moving through you anyway. So it's it's one of those those Taiji paradoxes that it's a both and. We are plugging into the big chi and it's moving and it's doing its thing, and we are we're really cool. We're kind of surfing the wave, but like any surfer, you you got to be involved. There, there's there's a skill to surfing. There's a skill you you got to be able to to navigate the wave so that you can be able to, to keep going. So the uh, so it's a both end where we are both controlling and being controlled at the same time, which is the essence of Tai Chi. It's, you know, is to lead is to follow and to follow is to lead. And so we keep, we keep coming back to those paradoxes, um, but we have to own both sides of the paradox. Okay, anybody else? All, all good questions, thank you. Great, thank you all so much. It's been a lot of fun, uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Love you guys. Love you, bye-bye.